What is up, everybody? This is Mr. Tui, creator of the AccuPlacer Math Crash Course series. And I'm so excited to announce that AccuPlacer Math Crash Course has been updated to include even more questions from the quantitative reasoning, algebra, and statistics section of the test. In this video, I'm going to teach you the easiest and fastest way to solve a variety of questions from the quantitative reasoning, algebra, and statistics section of the test using my unique and powerful test taking strategies that simplify the questions. These are some of the most recently released questions from the QAS section that I found online, and I'm happy to share them with you today. Oh, and by the way, if you like this video, you're definitely going to want to get access to the full version of the course. Just click the link in the description below to access the full version. In the meantime, sit back, relax, and enjoy these questions from the quantitative reasoning, algebra, and statistics section of the AccuPlacer. All right, welcome everybody to AccuPlacer Math Crash Course. This is day five. Uh, this is the day five update. We are on the quantitative algebra, uh, <laughs> wait, quantitative reasoning, algebra, and statistics section of, uh, of the test. And I've got some, some questions that I found online, some new QAS, quantitative al uh, reasoning, algebra, and statistics questions, um, that have popped up. And, uh, and I kind of want to go over those questions. A lot of it's going to be familiar, but there's a couple new things that are on here as well. And I just want to uh, provide you with the latest questions and, and the latest concepts that are being tested on the AccuPlacer. So that's why we're going over this today. We've got a student with us today. This is Matteo. Say hi to everybody, please, Matteo. Hello. All right. Thanks, Matteo. Appreciate Hello. it. All right. And we got a question up on the screen. Let's just jump right into the questions, and we'll solve these together. Go and read question number one for us, please. All right. Which of the following is equivalent to uh, negative 14 minus 8 and 0 0.5? Plus zero point seventy five. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, there's there's a word in here in this question. This word equivalent. What does the word equivalent yes, mean? Uh, the same to or equal. The to. same or equal. Absolutely. Yeah. So we got to find the answer. Is that's equivalent or equal to that big mess right there? Now, um, this is this is a tough question, especially because I, I think here on this question they're not going to give you access to the online calculator. In fact, I just checked before uh, recording the session with Matteo. Um, you don't have access to a calculator, so you got to be able to do the arithmetic here. On this one. But really what they're testing on more than anything else, I think, on this question is PEMDAS. PEMDAS order of operations. Yeah. So even though like some students might look at this question like, oh come on, I got this. Like, you know, this is just arithmetic. But like Pem PEMDAS order of operations appears on so many questions. You have to be able to simplify expressions the right way. So I think this is a really important question to go over and, and start with right now. So let's review PEMDAS quickly before. Uh, we try to solve this one together. You've got uh, access to my rules for AccuPlacer Math. Go ahead and open that up. And it's toward the end of the document. This is like on page 7 of the document. There we go. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And let's just review PEMDAS. This is this is important. Okay. So uh, PEMDAS order of operations. When simplifying expressions, simplify in the order below. Go ahead and read that first bullet point for us, please. On parentheses. So, yeah. so the first one is going to be parentheses. It's going to be calculate what is the side of parentheses first before doing anything else. Okay, great. And now if you don't have any parentheses in the question, you don't have to worry about that. But if you got them, you've got to start there. Go ahead and read the next part, please. So exponents, calculate anything raised to a power. For example, negative uh, 9 raised to the power of 2. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So if you see any of those little powers, right, that's going to be sort of the number above another number. Then uh, you yes, have to do the exponents. And sometimes you'll see exponents outside parentheses, but still kind of do it in the order of parentheses first and then do the exponents. Go ahead and read the next uh, bullet points, please. Next one is going to be uh, multiplication. Which you know what that is, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we got division. Division, okay. And then lastly... Addition got, and subtraction. Yeah, addition and subtraction. You can really kind of lump those together. It's, it's funny. We're going to talk about it when we, when we uh, address this question. Some students are like, wait, I saw you do a subtraction first in a question. It's like addition and subtraction are roughly the same operation, right? Because if you're, if you're subtracting, you're really adding a negative number. So really the, for the last two steps, it doesn't really matter sort of like which, which one you end up doing first, as long as addition and subtraction are last. But if you just want to do it in the addition first and subtraction, that's fine. But be aware, you know, either either one doesn't really matter. Let's go back to the question here. So notice we obviously have some addition going on with that plus 0.75. We got some subtraction going on with the negative 14 and the negative 8. And we got some multiplication here as well. What step are we doing first here if we're doing PEMDAS, Mateo? Uh, multiplication. We're doing the multiplication. Absolutely. Now, this is a little bit trickier because we could ask, I mean, this is a legitimate question. You say, okay, well, what are we multiplying here? What are we multiplying? Uh, 8 times uh, 0 0.5? That's probably what I would do. Yeah, 8 times 0 
That's what I would do. Some students might look at that and be like, well, don't I have to do negative 8 times 0 0.05? Which, by the way, you could do as well. You could do as well. Um, as long as once you calculated, like, negative 8 times 0 0.05, then you just added that to the negative 14. Does that make sense why you could multiply negative 8 times 0 0.05 as well? Yes, sir. Yeah. But I think it's much, it's just easier to understand if we just multiply these guys here, 8 times 0 0.05, and then we'll subtract whatever that product is from 14. Does that make some sense? Sir, That's perfect. just easier for me to wrap my head around. Okay, so let's talk about that. I mean, like, we could do the operation. I think we might we might do it here in just a moment, because, again, we don't have a calculator, so you got to be able to calculate it. You might logically be able to tell me what 8 times 0 0.05 is. Do you know what that would be logically or no? Yeah, so if 0.5 is uh, multiplied by 2, I mean by 4, it's going to be 2. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And here's it's just 8 times 0 0.05. What's that going to be? It's going to be 4. It's going to be 4, yeah. Point, or 0 0.5 is the same as 1 half. Is that clear? I mean, it, it's really helpful to understand that. Just like yes, 0 0.25 would be 1 fourth, 1 quarter, you know. If you can recognize that, you're like, oh, I'm just finding half of 8. And, like, anybody can figure out what half of 8 is just logically, right? It's just 4. Now, if we need to do the, oper you know, the operation, we, we could. And, in fact, I do want to go over that because you might see on the test, you might see some other, other um, decimals that are a little more complicated. Do you know how to multiply 8 times 0 0.05, like how to carry out that operation? This is like elementary school math, but sometimes you got to do it on the test. Could you do that on the whiteboard? Yes, yeah, let me see you do that on the whiteboard. Yes, Let's go over it together. I just want to verify it. Looking good. So eight times four is forty. Yeah. So you get forty, and then notice, like some students might think that's forty, right? If they're carrying that, that multiplication, right? Because five times eight is forty. But you got to pay close attention when you're multiplying by, you know, something that has numbers to the right of the decimal. You got to ask, okay, how many digits are to the right of the decimal? So it's going to be one. Yeah. Got one, yeah. So you've got, if you've got one digit to the right decimal, you've got to shift the decimal from uh, basically over one space here, over one unit, over one digit, and that would give us 4.0 or just 4. Does that make some sense? All right. Yes, okay, sir. Great. So we could rewrite this expression, and we should, now that we've got the multiplication. Now, there's nothing really to calculate in the parentheses. Uh, there's no exponents here. We could go right to the multiplication, which we did. I would rewrite the expression like this. I'd be like negative 14 minus 4 plus 0 0.75. Does that make sense, Mateo? Sure. Okay, good, good. Now, wh what would we do next? If we're uh, we, can, we can subtract the, the 4 from a negative 14. Yeah, I'd probably do that. I'd like to go, like, once you've got all addition and subtraction, I just like going from left to right. If you wanted to follow PEMDAS strictly, you might be like, well, I got to do the addition first, which you could do. You could do negative 4 plus 0.75, and then that's going to give you a negative number, and then subtract that from, from negative 14. Um, I'd probably just go left to right here. So, yeah, let's do, let's do negative 14 minus 4. What would that be? Do you have any idea, Mateo? Yeah, it's going to be negative 10. Ah, that's not negative 10. Interestingly, ooh, we got to talk about this. We got to talk about this right now. Think about this. Hold on. Hold on. Let's step back and think about what this means. So we've got negative 14. Imagine that you've got negative $14 in your bank account, Mateo. Negative, right? You know, like, you know, that's... <laughs> hopefully you have a little bit more than that in your bank, bank account. <laughs> like, it happens, right? We've all been there. Right? Good heavens, I've been there, all right? Negative $14 yeah. in your bank account. And then, like, and then you take away four more dollars. Huh. Right? Or you somehow, like, you know, withdraw four more dollars. You know, depending on your bank's policy, that, that may or may not be possible. But you lose four more dollars. What are you going to have in your bank account? You start with negative 14 and you lose four more dollars. You take away four more. What are you going to have in your oh, bank okay, account? Gotcha. What are you going to have in your It'll bank 18. account? Negative 18. Absolutely. Yes, that, right? And like, this is really how I recommend thinking about it. Think about it in concrete terms as much as you can. Or you could talk about like temperatures. Like imagine it's like negative 14 degrees, you know, below zero outside. Okay. That's cold. All right. I grew up in Michigan, by the way. Like it does get that cold up there. But let's say it's negative 14 degrees, you know, and then... The temperature drops four more degrees. You take away four more degrees. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Right? Like, it's dropping even... It's going to be even more negative. Does that make sense, Mateo? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, negative 14 plus four would be negative 10. But that would be increasing it. 
does that make sense here why it's going to be like even more negative than negative 14 does that make sense yeah because yeah because you're subtracting four subtracting, yeah. yeah yeah like negative 100 is really really negative someone's looking at that and they're like well that's a bit 100 is a bigger number which is true 100 is a bigger number than like you know 14 or 18 but like you know the 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 bigger the negative number <laughs> incredibly right like the the more yeah. negative the smaller it is like negative a million is very very small and here we're getting smaller than negative 14 so it's gonna be negative 18 does that make sense sure okay okay good so we've got negative 18 and then we still have that plus 0.75 or 0 0.75 same thing what do we do now uh, we just add. You just oh. add those. Yeah, some students might be able to do that logically. You might want to actually like carry out the operation. Do you think you can do this logically here, or, or, um, or do you want to carry out the operation? What are your thoughts? Uh, we can do it logically. Yeah, I, I would do it logically, especially when you kind of look at the answer choices here, right? So we've got, we've let me make that real clear that that's a zero. I'm gonna fix that. Zero there. Okay. So we've got negative eighteen, and then we're adding something a little bit less than one. <laughs> do you see that yeah. so we're, gonna make, we're gonna make it a little more positive a little bit you know but like if we're adding one what's negative 18 plus one it's gonna be 17 negative negative 17 right negative 18 plus one is negative 17 negative 17 yeah is that yeah, sure. why it's negative still yeah yeah so what do you think the right answer is here if you're just guessing or, or making a I would say it's gonna be C it's probably C yeah it's gonna be C for sure because it's gonna be just a little bit more positive than negative 18 that would be C. So your best bet is to solve it logically, basically the He's way logic. that we did it initially, right? And realize it's going to be negative seventeen point two five. That's that's the best way to do it there. And that's kind of like one of the themes all the way throughout my courses, right? Is that like sometimes like trying to approach questions from an operational perspective, there's a lot of traps there. It's easy to get it mixed up. Think about what things mean. Focus on what things mean, and let that guide you. Does that make some sense, Mateo? Yes, hey, sir. Okay, great. All right, let's go to the next question. Go and read question number two. What do you see it on the screen, please? I was a Fabian receive a hundred dollar gift card to a clothing uh, to a clothing store using only the gift card. He was able to purchase and sweaters that cost thirty two each, and one belt for twenty. If there was no tax on the sweater and belt, which of the following must be true? Okay, what did we? Saw? I actually, yeah. I, I actually saw a similar question. Oh, okay, this. okay, yeah, 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 yeah. On the on the recent test you took. This is, sure. dude, this is tough because like, if you're trying to create sort of the expression, like trying to create the inequality, even if you set it up correctly, like there's no guarantee what you create is going to match the answer choices here. This is super tough if you're trying to create the inequality. Okay. I'm, I'll be honest. Like, I'm not even certain exactly how to do it. I could probably figure it out, but like, there's an easier way to do this. And that's by plugging in values. Right? Yeah, we can create a value for n. And what does n represent here in this question? What does n mean? Sweaters. It's the number of sweaters, right? Because it says he was able to purchase n sweaters. And if we create a value for n, right, that leaves it meets the requirements of the question. We can just plug that into the answer choices and see which one or which ones are true. Does that make some sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Now. So he's got a hundred dollar gift card because we got to pick the we can't just pick any value for him. We're limited sort of by the scenario in the question. He's got a hundred dollar gift card. Each sweater costs thirty two bucks, and he he purchased some unknown number of sweaters, and he purchased a a belt for twenty bucks. Okay, so I think I think we can figure out how many sweaters he could potentially buy here. Do you have any idea how many sweaters he could buy here? He's got a hundred dollar gift card. Sweaters cost thirty two bucks. He buys some number of those, and he buys a belt for twenty bucks. How many sweaters can he buy? Let's say, I'll say three. Well, let's try it. Let's Four. test it. Let's test it. Okay, let's say N equals three. How much would three sweaters cost? So it's going to be 32. And, and you can use your cost. calculator here. This, this, you'd have access to a calculator in this question. Oh, 96. Yeah. Yeah, hold on. So, yeah, so that's 96 bucks. But then he's got to buy the belt also. Do you see that? Right. And then the belt's going to be 20 bucks. Would he have enough money to buy three sweaters and one belt? No. No way no way and this is where i'm you know i'm glad we're going over this right because like uh, plugging the values is my favorite strategy of all time for this test there's no question about it but um but you can't just plug anything in always right like sometimes they give you limits to what works you can't do three or higher here you can't can we try another number mateo 
Give me another number. Yeah, this is two. Let's just try two. Okay, and let's test it to make sure it works first. So if he buys two sweaters, how much is that going to cost? You can use your calculator. It's just two times 32. It's going to be 64. 64 bucks for the two sweaters. And then the belt is 20 bucks, right? Is that going to be the enough money to buy two sweaters and yeah. one belt? Yeah, I think so. Because how much would that be? Two sweaters and one belt? 84. 84 bucks. Yeah. So that would work. Does that make sense why N could be two? Yeah, yeah. sure. I think uh, one could work as well here. It could. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. it could work. Uh, but two or one would be fine, you know. All right, so let's let's just roll with two because we know that meets the requirements of the question. So if we plug in a two for N into the expressions in the question, the right answer has to give us a true statement. So let's plug into answer choice A. Can I see you plug in a two into answer choice A on the whiteboard? Can I see you do that? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, good. Um, let's 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 talk about what this statement means here. Do you know what eighty divided by two is? Yeah, it's gonna be forty. It's gonna be forty, right? So we could rewrite this expression as forty is greater than or equal to thirty-two. You got to interpret that sign the right way. Is that clear? By the way, the sign is greater than or equal to. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Yeah. So Mateo is forty greater than or equal to thirty-two. It sure is. It sure is. Let's let's keep answer choice A. Right now, I wouldn't stop mm-hmm. here. We got to test the other answer choice, right? Because it's very possible that uh, that multiple answer choices could give you a true statement if you're plugging in values, right? You know this, you know, working your way through the course. So let's test answer choice B as well, but we'll keep answer choice A for right now. Let's plug right. in a two to answer choice B. Let me see you do it. Looking good. Right, so What's 30. 32 divided by two? It's going to be 16. Yeah, so 16 is greater than or equal to 80. I got it here. Yeah, yeah so a uh, true statement or no? It's going to be false statement. Yeah, it's though. definitely it's not, not true, so it's not answer choice. Right. Gone, absolutely. Let's try answer choice C. And right now, you might even be able to look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, right? yeah. It's is that going to give us a true chosen. statement? No. No, it's going to give us 40, right? 40 is uh, less than or equal to 32. So that's not right either. Is that is that clear? Yeah, that's okay, not right. Great. What about answer choice uh, D? Actually, let's plug in answer choice D here. That's a little bit more complicated. Yeah. So let me see you plug in the D. Let's see what happens. All right, looking All right. good, looking good. Now here, I, I think in terms of PEMDOS, once again, right, before we do this addition or subtraction, what do we have to do here? I went with the We got to multiply, absolutely. Yeah, so 32 times, yeah, go ahead. You got it, you got it. 32, 64. Yeah. And yeah, you sh- you've got to calculate on this question. So, I mean, as long as you're, you're following PEMDAS and you got your order of operations, you should be good. So that's going to be 36. Yeah. Great. So it's 36 less than or equal to 20. <laughs> No, that's false, yeah. That's no, not true. So it's got to be answer choice A, which it is. Does that make mm-hmm. some sense, Mateo? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, you said you saw a question like this on the test. Did you plug in values? I did. Yes, okay, good. It good. was actually it was actually percentage, too. So oh, interesting. Kind of okay. Yeah. Oh, that could be tough. That could be okay. tough. But did it work out? Do you think you got it? Yeah, I think yeah, it did. Yeah, great. Great. Yeah. But it's still by far the most useful strategy on this test, plugging in values. Very few questions where you have to carry out a specific algebraic operation. Very few. But it uh, certainly works here. Any questions before we move on? No, sir. Okay, great. Let's keep rolling. It looks like another plug-in and values question here. Go ahead and read question number three for us, please. Expression is equivalent to or and my uh, three to the power raised to the power two plus n. Yeah, yeah, that's a messy. That's a messy looking expression there, Mateo. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. So, what are we solving for? Uh, which uh, which expression is uh, equal or yeah. the same? As yeah, absolutely. That one. Yeah, there's that word equivalent again. You got to know that here for this test. Which expression is equivalent to that big mess? All right. Is it clear that we can just plug in values for n here for this question? Yeah. Is that obvious? Yeah. All right. So uh, so the strategy here, right? We're going to create a value for n. We're going to plug into this expression here. We'll find out what that equals for some value of n. 
And then we'll plug that same value into the answer choices and we'll see what matches. Make sense? All right, just okay, sure. Okay, okay. What value do you want to plug in for N? We've got some options here. Oh, uh, we can do one. Let's start with Thank one. Well, yeah, one works great. I love ones. Ones and zeros are wonderful. So let's make N equal one. Okay, now, plug that into the expression here in the question. Let's see what it equals. Let me see you work that out on the whiteboard, Mateo. Good, looking good. All right, so one minus three, or let's do an exponent first. Yeah, let's write. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could, um, you know, it's like, you know, you think about like <laughs> some students might wonder, like, shouldn't we do parentheses first? And it's like, yeah, well, to calculate what's in the parentheses, you have to do the exponents, right? Yeah, Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So strangely, because we're, cal we're calculating what's in the parentheses first, we have to do the exponents first. It's a little bit tricky, but you All navigated right. that beautifully. Yeah. So what does that can equal? So 9 minus 1 is going to be 8. Well, hold on just a minute. It's not 9 minus 1. It's not my, 9 minus 1. Oh, sorry. That's uh, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're, we're going to start with the exponent. Absolutely. Okay. So what's 3 squared? Let's talk about that. It's going to be 9. That's going to be 9. So we could rewrite this expression as 1 minus 9 in parentheses. Do you see that, Mateo? Sure. Yeah. And what's 1 minus 9? 8. What did you say it is? Eight. It's not eight. One minus nine oh, is not eight, right? Right? Oh, Hold yes. on. Think yeah. about it. Think about it. Hold on. Let's go back to what we were talking about on that first question. If you got one dollar in your bank account and I take away nine bucks, how much money do you have in your bank account? Uh, yeah, it's going to be a negative eight. Negative eight. Does that make sure. sense? Or if it's one degree outside, one degree above zero, and then it drops nine degrees, it's going to be negative eight degrees. Yes, sir. Uh, you, uh, sometimes with negatives, I think the best way to do it is just think in concrete terms. Okay. So, all right. So we've got four times negative eight plus one. Uh, let's keep doing PEMDAS here. What's next? So four times uh, negative eight. It's going to yeah. be negative 32. Negative 32. All right. Let me see you continue to work this out. Right here. Two plus one. Okay. All right, and then what's negative 32 plus 1? Negative 30, exactly. Does that make sense why we're kind of, where it's becoming just a little bit more positive? Yes, sir. It's not going to be negative 33. That would be negative 32 minus 1. Would be minus 1, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but negative 32 plus 1 is negative 31. Okay, great. So we know the right answer has got to give us negative 31. Which answer choice gives us negative 31? Well, let's plug in. I'm going to clear some space here. Let's plug into uh, answer choice A, and we'll see if that gives us negative 31. I'm going to find a clear spot on the whiteboard and plug that in. Uh, Is that a 1? Sorry. Okay, you're good. <laughs> that looks like, that looks like, you're good. You're good. Good. I just want yeah. to make sure. Okay. I got you. All right. So 3 times 1 is 3. That is going to be uh, negative three. Yeah. So is that negative thirty-one? No. That is that's a dumb question, right? Yeah. That's definitely that's, that's not his choice. Right? Hey, I'm going to fix this negative thirty-one. I just want to make it really clear that that is is a negative thirty-one right there. Hold on. There we go. Okay, good. Um, just in case there's any confusion, plug into answer choice B. I'll clear some space on the whiteboard. All right. Plug into B. So yeah, not, uh, yeah, not true. No good, right? Yeah, not true. We're looking for negative yeah. thirty-one. So B is gone. I'll clear some space. Let's plug into answer choice uh, C. You're doing great, Mateo. Ooh. Five times that is going to be negative 31. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Like, like, let's talk about how this works, right? Because we're, when we're going to that first arithmetic question, right, I kind of told that trick, like, you can just take 30, you can, you can take the bigger number, subtract the smaller number, and just make it negative. 
right? Like that's probably the best way to do it, right? I mean, first of all, is it clear that five minus 36 is going to be negative? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. So if you need to carry out that operation, you could just do 36 minus five, which I think pretty much anybody can do. Is it clear that's going to be 31? Yeah. So yeah, it's going to be, you make it negative. Yeah. And just make it negative. That's the best way to handle that. Because if you're trying to set up that op, like you know, doing the operation, that's just not obvious. So do it logically or just think about that little trick. Subtract the smaller number to the bigger number, make it negative. But that's looking good. Okay, well, let's test answer choice D. We'll keep C. I'll clear some space. I mean, you just look at that. Is that going to work? Is that going to give us negative 30? No. No, that's going to be super. That's going to be like negative 100 and something or 30. Something like that. Yeah, 100. Yeah. Yeah. No, not happening. So. It's got to be C, which it is. Woo! Any questions about that? Uh, sir. Okay. Sir, okay. I think a zero would work great here as well. It would. Oh, yeah, Let's just talk about that real quick. Yeah, like, if N is zero, you might even be able to do this mentally. If N is zero, what does this expression here in the question equal? So, zero. Be, uh, well, it would be zero minus, minus. nine. Mm. Right? So, it would be four times... What's zero minus nine, by the way? Minus nine? It's going to be uh, just uh, nine. No, zero minus nine is not nine. Oh, negative nine. Sorry. Negative nine. Zero plus nine is nine, but zero minus nine. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Negative nine, yeah. And then plus zero, but that's that's just going to be four times negative nine. Does that make some sense? Sure. So what's four times negative nine? It'll be uh, negative 36. Negative 36. So the right answer has got to give us negative 36 when n is zero. Does that make some sense? Sure. Yeah. Does the answer C give us negative 36 when n is 0? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Because 5 times 0 is 0, then minus 36 is negative 36. Would any of the other answer choices give us negative 36? Oh, no I think so. No way. No way. Okay. Mateo, like your, op- your operations are very, very good. You've got a good handle on these questions. You're approaching them the right way. I think the only thing you need to be really conscious of and really careful of, right, as you're taking this test, you're taking it this afternoon, uh, is those yeah. negatives. Is those negatives. You see oh, that yes. now, and you see how you have yeah. to think about it now. And if there's any confusion, as best you can, like think about it in concrete terms. Think about it like in terms of money in a bank account or temperatures and kind of let that logical understanding guide you. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And you'll be all right. Like that's the only thing I'm seeing so far. Um, you know, that's tripping you up. So pay close attention to those negatives. All right. Mateo, go ahead and read question number four for us, please. So Ava bought some pens for $2 each and some pencils for $1 each. She bought three more pens that pens and pencils and spent a total of 12. How, how many pencils did uh, Ava buy? Okay, Mateo, what did we solve for here with this question? So how many pencils did uh, she buy? Yeah, how many Ava pencils she bought? Yeah, and they give us four possible answer choices, right? Four possible numbers of pencils that, that she bought. Either two or three or four or five. Okay. Does this question make some sense, at least what we're solving for here? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Now, um, this is a system of equations question. And, and I think a lot of students, you know, certainly those that haven't watched my videos or taken my course, are going to try to set up a system of equations here, which you can do. It's just kind of complicated. Are you familiar with systems of equations? Do you want to set those up or not so much? Uh, that's much. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't worry about it. I mean, like, you know, some students watching this might be familiar with it. There's, like, two unknowns here, some unknown number of pencils and some unknown number of pens. And there's two equations you can create, and then you can do a specific algebraic operation to solve for those missing variables. And, and that's fine. But, again, like, as, as we've seen many times, right, the more steps you're doing, the likelier it is you're going to make a silly mistake. So we want to mm-hmm. simplify this as much as we can. And, and we can. We can test these answer choices. Okay? We can test these answer choices without doing any algebra. Okay, so like, for example, look at answer choice A. Answer choice A says uh, two, right? So the question is, how many pencils did she buy? Answer choice A is saying, okay, maybe she bought two pencils. Okay, two pencils. So all the answer choices really represent some possible number of pencils. I'm going to make a note of that. These are the pencils. And if answer choice A is correct, if she bought two pencils, you know exactly how many pens she bought. How many pens did she buy if she bought two pencils? How many pens? So she bought three more, so it's going to be five. It's going to be five. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does that make sense, Mateo? Yes, sir. Yeah. Because it says she bought three more pens and pencils. So just logically, we can be like, oh, she bought two pencils and she bought five pens. Now we can calculate really easily 
how much two pencils and five pens would cost. Really easily. Because mm-hmm. uh, it says the pens were $2 each and the pencils were a dollar each. So let's, let's start with the pencils. How much would the pencils cost? So two is going to be $2. $2 for the two pencils. Does that make sense? Sure. And then how much for the pens? So five times two is going to be 10. And five times two is 10. And what's the total? Uh, $12. $12. So what do you think about Ann's choice A? Yeah, I'll keep it. You let us keep it. That could work. Absolutely. I mean, in fact, it should work, right? I mean, like, I, I doubt they're going to give us multiple answer choices here that would that would work here. And we're not really plugging in values. We're just testing the answer choices here. I would still be careful and like let's make sure we're on the right track and test the others. But A is looking really, really good. But let's let's continue. Let's practice the process again of testing these answer choices. So look at answer choice B. So that's uh, suggesting she bought three pencils. If she bought three pencils, how many pens did she buy? So six. That'd be six pens. Yeah, because you bought three more pens and pencils. How much would three pencils cost? Uh, three dollars. Three dollars. I'm just testing this. And then how much would six pens cost? Uh, twelve. Uh, yeah. Uh, hold on. Uh, yeah, twelve. So what would the total be? It's going to be fifteen. It's going to be fifteen. So what do you think about answer choice B? No. It's no not. way. Yeah, because the question said she spent a total of twelve bucks. Does that make sense? Sir. Yeah. I mean, we could test C and D if we wanted to. Do you think we need to? Or no, not? because no. the higher the number, the higher the, 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 the more price. The cost. Yeah, so we're good, man. We're good. I, I would still probably double check, make sure we're on the right track. Because sometimes, like, if you make an arithmetic error somewhere, you know, like, and then you test B and you're like, oh, wait, that works too. Or if somehow that gave you 12, you'd be like, okay, maybe I approached it the wrong way somewhere. I did a, uh, you know, addition or subtraction error or something like that, some arithmetic. So it's not a bad idea, but I feel pretty confident here. About stopping and picking up this choice, A. And it is A. Any questions about that, Mateo? No, sir. If you look at it, again, it's like finding the right answer, like calculating the number of pencils here is tricky. It is. Even if you're familiar with systems of equations, it's just tricky and there's a lot of steps. If you see a question like this where you're like, man, I don't know how to calculate that, ask yourself this question. Can I just test these answers? And 95% of the time, maybe more than that, maybe 100% of the time, That's an easier path than trying to calculate it. Look for ways to test answer choices.